Steve Pachanik, and this is Steve Talks. now for a whole year. Young kids just like Trisha. I know, you think they got a point, Edgar? This whole damn system of government. Remember what Lenin said in 1917, Mr. President? The power was lying in the street. Just waiting for someone to pick it up. The communists have never been closer than they are now. Now is the time to get back to the old things. The ones that made you president. Let the communists know you're on to them. Little bastards think they can ruin Trisha's wedding by dancing naked in the reflecting pool. But don't listen to them. And don't quit. Remember, Kennedy and King were against the war. Where are they now? <laughs> now I want to talk a little bit about uh, Oliver Stone and his incredible interview with Vladimir Putin. It turns out that I know Oliver quite well, uh, not as a personal friend, but as somebody whom I had met many years ago in Hollywood while I was a producer and he started up as a director. I have a lot of respect for Oliver. He's one of the few individuals whom I know, both in Hollywood or anywhere else, including Washington, who literally left Yale University and volunteered for combat duty in Vietnam and was wounded and was a decorated hero. He subsequently pitched two films to me, which I turned down stupidly. One was about a platoon. I said, it will never happen because we have apocalypse now. And the other one, he said, because I was Cuban, we should do a movie about a Cuban gangster. And of course, I started to laugh. And of course, the final joke was on me. That was Al Pacino's Scarface. But the point here is that Oliver Stone did a brilliant job of interviewing Vladimir Putin. And in turn, you get to see a very important part of a man who was a KGB operative. Now, for those of, those of you who think I'm soft or Oliver may be soft, I be, I'm going to remind you that I was involved in the takedown of the Soviet Union. I spent many years in, um, with the KGB, against the KGB, working with the KGB, as well as with the GRU. When we took it down, we took it down systematically. And the mistake that we made was to bring in a drunk like Boris Yeltsin. Now, for those of you who think that Russia is our enemy, you better rethink it. Russia was our most formidable ally in World War II. While we lost many men, close to three quarters of a million, the Russians lost over 30 million men, keeping that war going so that we could have finally entered into World War II. The point of fact is very simple, and I would say categorically, despite all the neocon nonsense and all the anti-Russian nonsense, Russia has always been a formidable ally and will continue to be a formidable ally. Vladimir Putin has no desire to take us down, this, has never attempted to take it down. Whatever impact he may or may not have on our election is totally irrelevant because he, unlike President Bush, Jr. and Clinton and Obama didn't do false flags. He didn't need to. He has his own problems in Russia. He has an economy that's falling apart. And he, in turn, was willing to help us in the Middle East. Now, a final word to my friends who are millennials. I'm speaking as an old friend of the Democratic Party. Believe it or not, I've had some very good friends who were some of the leaders of the Democratic Party. One of them happened to have been Congressman Henry Waxman, an incredibly unusual young man who turned out to effectively pass legislation that allowed us to stop smoking and contain the amount of soot in the air. What I'm saying to you now is you, the millennials, you must take charge of your own party. And the reason for that is that Nancy Pelosi, who I'm sure is okay and is a nice person, I don't know her, really does not want to give up the power. She's 77 years old. 
You have Diane Feinstein, 80 years old. You have Hiawatha Warren. She's 68 or 69 years old. You have McCain, of course, a Republican who's 80 years old. The point of fact is people like myself should step out of the way so that you millennials can come in, take over power. The person I supported over a year ago was a 35-year-old, openly gay, a mayor of South Bend, Indiana, by the name of Peter Bullockegg. I think I'm ruining his last name, but he knows who I am. He's a Rhodes Scholar. He's a Navy officer. He went to Harvard. He went to Oxford. And he should have been the chairman of the Democratic Party. And for you people, you have to understand Youth will have to conquer age. And if you have to protest in the streets, then do that. But do it against your elders, Nancy Pelosi, Diane Feinstein, and the others. Let me leave you with a word from Ronald Reagan. He said, for we Republicans, every day was July 4th. But for we Democrats, every day was April 15th, tax day. Good luck and good night. Hi. This is Dr. Steve Chenick, and this is Steve Talks. 